Welcome back to another Wordy Wednesday. Well, today I thought we would talk about some Britishisms, and I have a list that is by no means exhaustive. It just happens to be a number of Britishisms I have pulled from a British book by a major author. So, stick around. We'll get right into it. And yes, you can come into my lap. Well, as a lot of you may know, because when I was feeling under the weather, yes, as a result of the flu shot, it wasn't awful because the latest Robert Galbraith book came out. Now, here, see. By the way, over 900 pages. A meaty book. That's my desk you're jumping on. Now, I have the hardbound, but I, I read it on audiobooks. Um, but I have this for error checking. So I thought we would take a look at some Britishisms, which is what I'm going to have to call them, because um, the, the author, and yes, Robert Galbraith, is actually J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter series. And Rowling is one of the 10 best-selling authors ever. So that puts her on the same list with people like Shakespeare, Barbara Cartland, who never had an unpublished thought, um, Sidney Sheldon. It, it, most of the work on this list uh, of top 10 is kind of junk. You know, it's like romance novels. It's, it's the sort of trash that if you caught your teenage daughter reading it, you'd pull it out of her hand and give her something more substantial. Barbara Cartland being a fine example. But given the fact that she outpaced Ernest Hemingway, Chaucer, uh, my beloved Jane Austen is way in the back choking on her dust, I think it's fair to assume that she has at her disposal the finest editor's money can buy. So that's one of the reasons that this is actually a good choice to pick apart because you're not seeing editorial mistakes with a writer of that caliber. You're not. The editing of a book like this is going to be top notch. So let's take a look at some of these Britishisms. Now, you know, my favorite must have done certainly crops up left and right. That we've dealt with before. In America, we would say, uh, if somebody says, did John go to the store? We would say he must have. Did John paint the car? Well, to them, he must have done. Sounds odd to us. Sounds too many words. Sounds, it sounds odd. So that Britishism, disorientated. Well, we would say disoriented. And we already covered that when we spoke about orient and orientate. It's that extra syllable that is just not here in American English. The next one, I am so sorry, but this is just plain wrong. One fewer trees. Now, when we listen to that, we know it's wrong. Why? Because we are talking about one fewer. So it would be one fewer 
um, cup, one fewer cat, one fewer tree. Because tree, or in this case trees, must agree with the number that has already been established. Pull out fewer and you get one trees. No. If you pull out fewer, you should get one tree. That's, by the way, the easiest way to get your sentences to have full agreement in the numbers is pull out anything extraneous. How many trees are we talking about when we say fewer? It's not two few, fewer trees. It's one fewer tree. So what happened here? This one I'm not willing to write off as a Britishism. I'm not, I, I don't see how I can. I'm going to have to say that's a mistake. So I'm calling that one mistake. Oops. Um, and I don't know what to say after having just said, you know, this is one of the best-selling authors of all time. No question that she can write. No question that she has an outstanding command of the English language. No question that her editors have got to be among the best available. Certainly the best available in the English language. And we're speaking about the English language. So how do I explain that? I don't. Uh, I, I just say, oops, caught you out. Cafetier. That is a word that is used rather often in this book. And I actually had to look it up. I, I knew it had something to do with coffee. A cafetier is a French press. Um, I have a French press. I'll show you a picture of a French press. Probably won't be mine. I'll probably just go online and grab one. But that's all it is. It's a French press. It sounds much more snooty and elegant when you say cafetier, though, doesn't it? So I'm going to say that one is Britishism. Pressurizing. In this context, they were talking about putting emotional pressure on someone. And instead of, as we would say, pressuring, pressurizing, it's like disorientating and must have done that little bit extra that they just seem determined to throw in there that sounds very odd to our ears. If someone said to me, John is pressurizing Mary, I would have this notion of Mary coming up in a bathosphere and, and having to be decompressed so she didn't get the bends. And that sounds I, I, it's almost like torture. You know, John is pressurizing Mary. It, it doesn't even have the same general associations. Lego. All right, this one. Um, and I had to look this up. When we talk about Legos, those little colored children's building blocks, we talk about them as Legos. Apparently, this is not just a Britishism to call them Lego. So we would say, little Johnny is playing with his Legos. They would say, little Mary is playing with her Lego. Uh, as a mass now, I can't believe you just did that, you naughty cat. I am so sorry about that. He took me by surprise. Um, yes, I, I guess after not appearing in the videos for several days, he's making up for it. Well, for them, it's like, you know, we would say little Johnny or little Mary is out playing with some mud. You know, for them, it's some Lego. And apparently that's just what it is. It's a mass noun to them. Lego is its own plural, uh, and they don't see it as a collection of individual blocks. They see it as like a mass of stuff.
I find that peculiar because, quite frankly, there is no doubt in my mind that Legos can be counted, easily counted. Therefore, I would think of it as a count noun, not a mass noun. So, I would assume, although I could not find information on this, I'm going to have to find a Dane, because Legos originally came from Denmark. I'm going to have to find a Dane and see if it's fewer Legos, which we would have, or less Legos, or less Lego. Johnny has less Lego than Mary. Sounds so bizarre to us, but I swear that's how they do it. So that we have to write off as a Britishism. As per usual, again, we have this extra word. John went to the store as per usual. John went to the store as usual. Per is just a Latin word that means by. So I'm not even sure how that makes sense. John went to the store as by usual. Uh, but I'm reluctant to call it wrong, mostly because it fits into this pattern that we're already identifying as Brits like extra words, extra syllables. No, but not when it comes to Legos. Then we have fewer letters. So what can I say? As per usual sounds wrong to me. It sounds like like slang, like um, uh, an, an expression that's just just this side of acceptable. But there we go. Um, push chair. Now, I would have thought of a push chair as something along the lines of one of those old fashioned wheelchairs that cannot be operated by the person sitting in it and has to be pushed. Or maybe even, you know, uh, um, I like those big old wicker conveyances they used to shove the elderly here and there in. Baby stroller. Push chair, baby stroller. I don't know. I know which one sounds normal to me. Alice Band. Now this is cute because I, I'm familiar with this one. It's a headband just a girl's headband. And ordinarily, an Alice band refers to those hard plastic headbands that people my age remember from the 50s and early 60s. Um, and it comes from Alice in Wonderland. So we know that, that in the original illustrations from the book, Alice was always shown wearing a headband. So the British Alice band to us headband. So that is just a Britishism. Half 11. All right. Now I know a lot of you are thinking five and a half. Huh? That means half past 11. 11.30. Half 11. Now I'm going to say that is either a Britishism or a British regionalism. And the reason for that is we have the same thing in the U.S. Um, if you want to refer to the time, 11.45, some people will say a quarter to noon. Some people will say a quarter till noon, a quarter of noon or just quarter of noon, quarter to noon. So, but, and that tends to be regional. In some parts of the country, some of those are a little more common. Quarter till is something you hear in the Northeast. Uh, quarter of, you are inclined to hear a little more in the South. But because we are homogenized by 
things like national news, where we have the newscasters every night, Hollywood television in general. Our American quarter of, quarter two, quarter tills tend to spread. So something that might have begun as a New England expression quickly filters through to the rest of the country, as do uh, the others, uh, quarter of, quarter two. So I'm going to say half 11 is probably a Britishism, but if I had to bet, it's, I bet that it was regional, that in some parts of England that's more common than others. Chemist. A chemist is a druggist. Going to the chemist's shop is going to the drugstore. This is one that I have always known because uh, my grandfather was a chemist. Um, and the term was used in the United States. He was a pharmacist. But back in the days when, and you know, this was long ago, back in the days when, you know, my grandfather would have been doing his thing in the pharmacy or the chemist's shop, he would have been known as a chemist. So for us, it's an antique term and it has been replaced by pharmacist. For them, it is still used. Kitchen roll. Oh my, that is paper towels. That was one that actually just, I, I, I understood from the context what it was right away. Grab the kitchen roll, but maybe it's just me. But it tends to bring up associations that little that, uh, that mm, uh, are a little too closely linked in my mind to the roll of toilet paper. So if that's the kitchen roll, is the other one the bathroom roll? I, I'm going to stick with paper towels. Thank you very much. So those were the Britishisms that I grabbed from this. But while we are on the subject of Britishisms, uh, I see this a lot with people, especially people who are Anglophiles, and they, they will uh, pronounce words the way the British do, schedule instead of schedule, or amongst instead of among, and personally, just between you and me, I find that very affected and very pretentious. But it's because I'm an American, and I'm very proud of our interpretation of the language. Uh, we have not taken their language and bastardized or abused it. No, we have enhanced it. Thank you very much. And there's no reason for us to hang our heads as if we are the country cousins, because we have not been the country cousins since World War II, Thank you very much. But, enough of my chauvinism. That's not how you convince someone that you're actually British. We started off with, uh, was it the second or third, uh, one fewer trees. Well, going back to that, the British have this unusual tendency, unusual for us, to look at certain words that to us are singular, even though they may describe a group, and they will look at them as plural. Now, I'll give you some examples so you understand what I mean. Family. I would say my family was in Toronto last year. They would say my family were in Toronto. For them, it's plural. Uh, the staff was upset over the last meeting. For them, the staff were upset over the last meeting. Rowing, the Harry Potter books. Gryffindor were excited that they won. Yeah, the Quidditch match. That 
and and things like that that different way of thinking about words and concepts that's how you convince people you really are british it's not because you've adopted a few foolish pronunciations or some vagaries of spelling um ask a brit how to spell chumley sometime you want to see vague spelling whoa my goodness so i find that very very interesting but those are the things that separate the men from the boys so to speak do you think of family as a plural you know is your family uh do you speak of your family as a group or as a collection and see for them it's plural you know it's as if they were talking about multiple families for us if i were going to say family and were in the same sentence i would be saying uh, my family the neighbor's family and you know my brother-in-law's family were all in toronto last year because for me family is a singular noun yes it describes a group of people but family itself is singular as is staff uh, as is uh, trying to think of what a Gryffindor a singular word so that's how you end up catching these people out but as I say I I consider it a foolish affectation there is a youtuber um, who is I think a cosplayer um, I occasionally tune into her videos uh, because they're sewing videos and whenever I look at it, I think, oh, good heavens, child, can you not be proud of where you come from? Why do you defer to the British to such an extent? You know, you're American. Be proud of it. Don't be adopting their customs and speech patterns because it seems foolish and affected. So anyway, that's where we are at. Now, I recently got a couple of questions from, uh, from viewers, and they wanted to talk about books. So, what I want to hear from all of my word nerds in the comments is, do you want me to start up a special video? This would not be part of the regular lineup. It would probably be, well, Tuesdays and Thursdays are my day off, so it would be one of those two days. Probably in the evening I would post it about books. And I was thinking about this because it occurred to me, no wonder I'm getting comments like this, because we word nerds have lost our book clubs. We have lost our ability to discuss literature with our friends because nobody's sitting around seeing their friends anymore. I mean, this is just sort of a thing of the past for us now and who knows when we're going to get it back so do you want to start a book club we can do it we can do it on youtube just like this we can start a virtual book club um i'm not sure exactly how the mechanics would work i think we'd work that out as we go along um but i think it obviously came from the fact that yes i have a new book I'm so thrilled. I waited two years for this. I'm so thrilled. I'm glad it's big, but I've already read it. So, you know, that's the worst of it. When I'm through, I think to myself, i got to wait another two years. Oh, so unfair. You know, Rowling really needs to get off her butt and start writing those a little faster. On the other hand, that's almost a thousand pages. Who would expect someone to do that in three months? Well, I would. I wanted to do it in three months. You know, it's a foolish expectation, but it's what I want. But we can do this if that's something you like. So give us some thought. Let me know. But as I say, it would be outside of the regular lineup. It would just be an evening video, just basically catering to our word nerds because 
I know a lot of you have lost this opportunity and it's a big deal and this is how we find out about new interesting books from our book clubs from our friends who are reading from being able to have these discussions if you want it well, let me know in the comments so a little bit of final business my email is working Yay! it only took 12 days unfortunately I have lost most of those 12 days worth of emails they have gone off into cyberspace and gotten lost there I will probably never get them back they're just gone but we're back up and running now so um, I'm not even really sure how this happened in other words it would be nice to know how the errors took place um, what really went wrong I think it was with my previous domain host when they switched over to a different email system I think they sort of lost yes but your tail was in my face lost m much of my email you know you would think it's, that you wouldn't be able to lose email as easily as you could lose a spare sock but apparently they did it so that is the good news email is back hallelujah all right now for those of you who have not already gone over to check out our crazy little critters please go check it out the little slideshow that I showed of her items is just a small portion a small portion of what she has she's got some gorgeous stuff and the prize is a $50 gift certificate to her shop which means if you win some of that gorgeous stuff could be yours so if you haven't already checked it out go check it out all right yeah I know yep yes yeah, somebody's spoiled all right so I will not see you tomorrow but I will see Friday we are taking our trip to Lutz Antiques by the way so uh, and that was something that we brought up in previous video uh, so we're going to go knock around an antique furniture shop that will be on Saturday because I'm going to Lutz on Friday so I don't know what I have for you Friday we'll we'll find something all right in the meantime, have a great couple of days, and I will see you on Friday.